In this video, we'll use the Add Desktop Pool Wizard to create an instant clone pool of virtual desktops. Instant clones are a vSphere technology. A clone is a child VM that shares the memory and virtual disks of a running parent VM. Although it takes several minutes to publish the golden image on which the clones are based, once the image is published and the running parent VM is created, it takes just seconds to create each clone. Before you can create an instant clone pool, here's what you need. A Windows virtual machine that has a desktop operating system installed, along with VMware tools and the Horizon agent. The complete requirements are listed in the product guide called Windows Desktops and Applications in Horizon 8. After you finish creating the VM in vSphere, power it off and take a VM snapshot of it. You also need to have created an OU in Active Directory and an Instant Clone Domain Administrator, as described in an earlier video in the series. You might also want to make a VM folder in vCenter Server Inventory to organize the clones in one place. OK, in the Horizon console, navigate to Inventory, Desktops, and click Add. On the Type page, leave Automated Desktop Pool. Click Next. On this page, leave Instant Clone and make sure your vCenter server is selected and click Next. For user assignment, click Floating, which means the VM will usually be deleted and recreated when the user logs out. Click Next. For storage policy management, click Use Separate Data Stores for Replica and OS Disks and click Next. For the desktop pool ID, for the example in this video, I'll use Win10 Inst Clones, but the display name, which is what the end user sees, will be Windows 10 Desktops. Click Next. For provisioning settings, leave the checkbox selected for Enable Provisioning. That means that after the golden image gets published, the system will go ahead and make the instant clones. For the naming pattern, I'll use W10-HZN8 hyphen, and then each clone will have its own number added to that name. For the maximum number of machines in a pool, enter 10, and leave spare machine set to 1. Click Next. OK, here's the fun part, vCenter server settings. For golden image in vCenter, click Browse and go find the VM you created as part of the prerequisites. Click Submit. Then go find the snapshot and click Submit. For Virtual Machine Folder Location, if you created a folder, click Browse and go find that, and click Submit. For Resource Cluster, click Browse and select something. Click Submit. For Resource Pool, I'm selecting the same thing. For Instant Clone Data Stores, click Browse and select something. Click Submit. Now, because we had selected that checkbox, for using separate data stores, we have to click Browse again and select a data store for the replica, which is made as part of the image publishing process. For network, we'll use the same network settings as are used for the golden image. And then we'll leave the defaults for CPU, RAM, and number of cores. Click Next, finally. Now for the desktop pool settings, scroll down so that you can get an idea of the sorts of things you can configure. We'll leave the defaults, except we'll allow users to restart their machines. Click Next. Remote Display Protocol. Leave the defaults and click Next. For the domain, make sure the domain user you created as part of the prerequisites is listed. For AD container, click Browse and find the OU that you created as part of the prerequisites. Leave the rest of the defaults. We'll go ahead and use clone prep instead of sysprep, which is more convenient. Click Next. We're not going to entitle users after adding the pool because I'll show you how to do that in a later video. Scroll through all the settings you've configured. There are tons of them. They are described in the product documentation topic, Worksheet for Creating an Instant Clone Desktop Pool. The pool is added to the Desktop Pools page. Click it to drill down to details. Scroll down on this Summary tab all the way to the vCenter Server section, 
and the secondary image area shows the publishing progress. Scroll up to refresh and scroll down again. The status is publishing. After several minutes, the status changes to published. Then you can scroll up and go to the Machines tab. It should show one machine since we said we wanted only one spare. If you scroll all the way to the right, you can see that the status for that machine says it's available. This virtual desktop is now ready to be assigned to a user, as we'll describe in a later video. For more Horizon technical resources, be sure to visit techzone.omnisa.com. <laughs>